if you could explain the lagoons, the technology yeah. used, and how <laughs> insane it is the amount of waste that they has have essentially just poured into uh, an environment and an, an environment there that also has a ton of water, rivers, streams. It's quite flat, so it's very susceptible to pollution in this very in the same way. Um, if, you, if you don't mind explaining yeah. their, their process. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, look, when Wendell Murphy put these hogs in barns, he put 1,200 inside one shed and then, you know, multiply the sheds in order to multiply, you know, the throughput. And some of these hog farms have 10 or 15 barns. I mean, you're talking about, you know, you could you could have 15,000 animals uh, on, you know, one piece of property and each hog produces the waste of five humans. So if you've got, you know, 5,000 animals, you know, then that's the waste of 25,000 humans, a small, small city, you know, and if you've got 15,000 animals, you're talking about the waste of 75,000 human beings. So you've got to do something with that. This isn't the days of yore where the you know, hogs do their business on the ground and, you know, run around and, you know, in the ground. I mean, you're talking about thousands and thousands of animals. So their idea was, look, you know, the cheapest possible way is just to use the cesspool technology, if you can call it that, that you know humans have used for a long time for a lot of different reasons, including our own waste in rural settings. So they just took backhoes and dug big pits in the earth and you know right next to the hog sheds, and then just washed the hog waste out. So the way that you know that works in the barns is the hogs stand on concrete slats and the waste falls through. I mean, a lot of it, sadly, because these barns are not kept very clean and hogs just do their business all day, every day. A lot of the floors just look like they're standing in hog waste and rolling around in hog waste. You kind of can't believe how disgusting it is inside a lot of these hog sheds. But the waste that then falls through the slats gets flushed out by water through pipes into these open air cesspools. And, you know, you're talking about the volume of 10 Olympic size swimming pools or or 40 water towers, I mean, uh, like a quarter of a million gallons each. These are massive, massive cesspools. And then, you know, the challenge, of course, is that if they're open to the air, not only are you constantly flushing the waste out of the hogs coming through the barns, you know, every five months, there's a new crop of hogs and they're producing waste every single day. But then you've got, you know, rainfall uh, coming from, you know, overhead and from the sky. So, that then adds the volume and you've got, you know, in a cesspool, a finite volume. So they then, the, the, the industry had to figure out what do you do with, uh, you know, with the volume when it reaches the berm, because the permit says you can't, you know, let it go over. So they then invented these giant, I call them Jurassic size lawn sprinklers. I mean, they're basically like waste cannons uh, that you hook up with, you know, by a fire hose to a pump and and just shoot this stuff out you know into the into the air high overhead i saw uh, this in, in delaware field. too with the chicken waste it's yes. unbelievable it yes. looks like a sprinkler it, it, right it looks like they're sprinkling yes. or like tending to the field but they're literally spraying waste yeah and with with hog waste because they've got so much of it actually you know what they would do i mean it actually looks like i mean if you imagine you know, a five alarm fire and and the way that, you know, the fire department would spray with the big hoses, you know, this giant rooster tail of, of water up into a building to put out a fire. It's that volume of hog waste being sprayed out a hundred feet in the air. I mean, it's a surreal, you know, I mean, the, the way that they did this and then without any concern whatsoever, I mean, none for the neighbors. And in, in some cases, even the litigation, you're talking about this is 20, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16. They were taking these pictures and videos. They were still spraying with these giant big guns directly toward these houses. I mean, not like a fire hose directed at somebody's window, but I mean, right up into the air in the field next door, such that the wind just, you know, picks it up and, and it drifts on the breeze. So you asked about the technology. I mean, how does a cesspool work? It's basically just, you know, they call it anaerobic digestion. I mean, it's just that, the way that nature treats waste, except in this case, you've got so much of it and it's so concentrated and, and it's not going to go away. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, the way waste gets treated by the forest floor. I mean, that's a natural process where everything biodegrades and it goes back into nature and becomes, you know, food for, you know, plants and whatnot. You're talking about such a volume of, of, you know, 
feces and urine coming from these animals that there's nothing that you can do with it. There's no way that you can turn it into, you know, usable uh, fertilizer, no matter how much the industry says, oh, we have a waste utilization plan. I mean, in reality, they're just trying to get rid of it as fast as they can. And they spray it all the time. And in fact, there have been countless violations that have been documented where they're spraying when they shouldn't, spraying toward, you know, rivers and streams. You mentioned, I mean, Eastern North Carolina is the remnants of an ancient sea. It's a coastal plain, it's loamy soil. You know, this is like, there's tons of runoff. And I mean, it's been proven. Goes into the rivers and streams. And when there's a hurricane, all of these things overflow. 2,000 cesspools, more than that, uh, you know, of, of that of volume across Eastern North Carolina. And when Florence came through and Floyd 20 years before, I mean, you've got, you know, billions of gallons of hog waste flowing into these beautiful rivers, killing fish, coming out in plumes into the intercoastal waterway. I mean, boaters have seen plumes of hog waste after hurricanes and storms. I mean, it's just it's surreal. It's like you, you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, is this really 2023? And are we really handling waste in this way? Like, is this a hundred years ago? Because we used to do this with human waste, you know, in a smaller volume, we had open sewers. We, it was uncivilized. And then one day we said, you know what, we're tired of this and we need to actually civilize our waste production and yeah. waste management. And well, no, they I mean, haven't done it with animals. That, this is what deregulation uh, looks like, really. I mean, this is this yes. is what happens when you have a libertarian utopia and it's a, the uh, desire you allow industry to run rampant in this way. Um, I mean, talk a bit about the actual now that we have a, a clear picture of how insane and disgusting these practices are. Like, what are the specific health problems that were faced by the residents as a result of all of this waste being exposed to them for so many years? Yeah, you know, I mean, there are just a lot of breathing problems. I mean, so one woman whose house is right next door, uh, you know, to a spray field, I mean, just developed terrible asthma uh, and, and just, I mean, she struggled to breathe for a long, long time. Um, you know, there have been heart issues like hypertension, uh, you know, the experience of these, that these people talked about, especially at the, you know, back in the, the height of this and in, in the 1990s and the 2000s, um, you know, of, of waking up at night in their own bedroom and finding themselves overwhelmed by a stench that, uh, and it's not just a stench, like that gets that's just offensive to smell, but it gets into your nose and in, into your soft tissue, your nose and throat, it burns almost like a light acid. Um, and it makes the air just inhospitable. You don't want to breathe it. I mean, one woman told me a story of waking up at night multiple times, you know, and of course her windows are open. They don't, you know, these folks don't have air conditioning. They, they have God's air conditioning. They open their windows. They let the breeze come in. And when, with the breeze, if they're spraying next door comes the hog waste. And so, you know, this woman, uh, you know, told me about waking up at night and, and having to flee her bedroom, but where do you go? Because it's everywhere. It's inside her house and all of her rooms. And of course it's outside. So there's, there's no way that she could, could actually get away from it. I mean, it just followed her everywhere. I mean, it, the, the, the consequences for for people's quality of life and their their own conception of the land i mean this is their ancestral land this the dirt beneath their feet is their most valuable asset personally their their most valuable resource and to have it polluted like this i mean you know in that same woman who told me the story about waking up at night i mean she had to padlock her wells because the well water got polluted and I mean, you talked about that with with poultry farmers. I mean, it's, you know, it get, this stuff gets into the ground, groundwater. It's not supposed to. And yet, you know, they're, they're one of the, the people that testified in the trials is this heroic hog farmer who was willing to testify against his own interest and against his own bosses, the only hog farmer in the entire uh, state of North Carolina who was still under contract and was willing to testify his name is Tom Butler, and he's one of my heroes. And he, and he talks about how, look, you know, these lagoons, they were designed for 30 years. A lot of them are unlined. It's just clay. 
and they seep into the groundwater. I mean, this stuff is getting out. Now the industry says, no, it's not. Please don't say that because, you know, that's illegal. But he said, everyone knows it. It, it's happening. And, and these lagoons were designed for 30 years and most of them are reaching their, at the end of their life cycle. And that, what, what then? I mean, it's not like we're going to dig a new pit in the earth and transfer the waste. It's just, I mean, this is an environmental disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. I mean, and, and it, it, it has, it, it did happen, obviously. Yes, and, and it has happened before. <laughs>